I've always said that a budget is about values and priorities as well as dollars and cents. My budget represents my values and priorities, one of which is to keep my promises that I made to the people of Minnesota last fall. A budget makes Minnesota taxes fairer by raising taxes only, and I emphasize only, on the wealthiest 5.5% of Minnesota taxpayers. Over 94% of all Minnesotans would see no tax increase under my budget proposal. My budget also increases funding for K-12 education, above that caused by the increase in the expected number of students. And it protects state aid to count cities, counties, and townships, thus preserving their essential local services like police and fire protection, and preventing state-forced increase in local property taxes. The first budget actions of the majority in the legislature last week would have increased property taxes by over $425 million, thus making Minnesota taxes more regressive and more unfair. My budget does the opposite. There will be no state-imposed local property tax increases through cuts to schools and local governments, and the only tax increases will fall upon our state's wealthiest citizens. My budget raises $2.4 billion in additional revenues by adding a fourth tier to top income earners, couples earning above $200,000 per year in gross income, and individuals earning over $100,000 per year, by adding a third property tax bracket on multi-million dollar homes, and by closing the snowbird tax loophole and other tax loopholes. It adds a temporary 3% surcharge on taxable incomes above a half a million dollars. This temporary surcharge will, and I emphasize the word will, end after the biennium or earlier if the state's budget picture improves during that time. I might add that some of the state tax increase on the wealthy will be significantly offset by their federal tax reductions from last December's extension of federal tax cuts. My budget makes almost $1 billion in permanent expenditure reductions. It increases surcharges on health care providers, more than half of which is recovered by increased medical assistance payments, as Commissioners Jessen and Showalter will detail. It's important to note on page 6 of the presentation that the comparable percentage of growth in state expenditures for the biennium is 7.5% which is an annual growth rate of 3.2%. From 2010, the beginning of the current biennium, to 2013, the end of the next biennium, the state's population is expected to increase by almost 130,000 people, an increase of about 2.3%. The number of students in our K-12 schools is, is expected to increase by almost 2%. This is healthy, desirable growth but it also requires an increase in state expenditures just to maintain the same levels of services. And the state, like almost all private and public operations, continues to be hit by rising health care costs, which outpace the rise in inflation and most other services. Getting health care cost increases under control will be a top priority for my administration and must also be a top priority at the national level. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, well, we are still going through the numbers and digesting a little, but I guess the headlines would be uh, the largest tax increase ever proposed by a governor, Minnesota governor, 3.35 billion in new tax increases, highest income tax rate in the country, 13.95% uh, now on the highest uh, bracket. And um, we are, what our map is talking about is that while Governor Dayton is proposing this 22.3% increase in state general fund spending. Uh, these governors, Democrats and Republicans, as you can see indicated in the red and the blue, are taking stands against new taxes. They're cutting taxes. They're making their states more competitive. Um, and so either these folks know what's happening across states and in, and in regards to being competitive, or Governor Dayton with the highest income tax in the country uh, knows what's going on, and we would propose that what needs to be done is more what's going on across the country. Um, Kirk, that's where our faith lies. This 
This proposal puts your faith in government, more taxes, more programs. Our faith is in the job providers, the hardworking women and men of our great state that go out every single day, take that risk, take that chance, start a new business, add a new line of sales. That's where our faith is, you know, small business owners across this great state to make that next leap to help our, improve our economy, not a, another program, another bureaucracy, another funding mechanism that, you know, quite frankly, uh, you know, w the money just isn't there. So our faith is that we're gonna go back to where we all were uh, we started session, which is redesign, making government more efficient and more effective. Where could the governor have cut? You know, I don't want to say this is dead on arrival. I don't think it's got much of a heartbeat. I don't think it's got much of a heartbeat.